Welcome to the ninth and final episode of Ami Commutes. So first of all, this fine Saturday morning, I want to say that the year that saw the announcement the other day, this series of videos is not ending because Ami's going anywhere. Uh, there was one or two of you a little bit worried that that meant that uh, Ami was moving on because I was going to stop making these commuting videos, but actually, if anything, the opposite is true. So the reason the Ami Commute series of videos is coming to an end is because I'm no longer going to have a job to commute to on a Saturday morning. Uh, I've just taken the decision to leave the delivery driving job. Um, Basically, uh, we have a new manager, uh, we have a little bit of a difference of opinion on uh, scheduling and uh, I think in a fairly typical manner, a new manager comes into a role and is it, very, very keen to be seen to be improving KPIs and uh, improving upon all of the metrics that they get measured on and that has really meant just taking a bulldozer to uh, quite a few uh, staff schedules, not just mine and uh, putting pressure on availability and, and what hours you can and can't work and, and that kind of thing. And given that I've already got a full-time job and this was meant to just be a little bit of uh, something else at the weekend and, and, and I'm not particularly interested in expanding the number of hours that I'm working for obvious reasons, uh, I'm taking the decision to leave. And, and I think that that um, is all we really need to say about that. Uh, you know, I'm not bitter about it. It's not, you know, I'm going into the last shift today it is what it is. Uh, I'm sure someone else will fill the role and be reasonably happy or as happy as you can be doing that role. And that'll be that. But it does mean there's a little bit of gap in my production schedule. Because these I mean, commute videos are based around me having to regularly drive into the city centre to, to do this delivery driving job. But don't worry about that. We will be working on bringing you some different content. And I think for some of you that were getting a little bit bored of these videos, that will be a good thing indeed. So I'm working on a number of potential things at the moment. Um, I bought a drone the other day, which is quite interesting. Um, looking to add some aerial footage for, for some of the things that I'm thinking about doing now. Um, I, they're not going to be as exciting as that probably makes it sound, but I, I think it, it would definitely add a, a new angle to one of the ideas I've got for, for Ami. The prob only problem I had is I bought a second hand drone because drones are pretty decent, half decent drones are pretty expensive and moving house soon and all that lovely stuff means that the budget is a little bit constrained. Obviously now they're having fewer jobs than previously. Uh, it means that as I thought, well, you know, a second hand drone, rather than buying a really cheap, it's sort an of off brand one, I'll buy a second hand, buy a second hand DJI Mini 2. Uh, one of those sort of you know, decent entry level drones for, for people that want sort of decent quality footage and, and want it to be easy to fly and all those things that, that matter. And that didn't go so well, so I, I was a bit disappointed. So I bought that from MPP, who are a well known, pretty, fairly reputable supplier of uh, second hand camera equipment. So if you've got old camera equipment you want to sell, you can sell it to them and then they'll sell it on a little bit like you know CEX and those kind of places do. They'll give you a bit less for it than what they'll sell it for, that's how they make the money. Happy days. So I bought this from them and it was described as well used and so it was a little bit cosmetically challenged. And I was like, well, that's fine, I'll probably crash it anyway. So if the casing's a bit beat up, well, that is what it is. So we'll give it a go. And it works, it flies. Uh, yeah, I, I, you could say that it, 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 it's, it works, but is it in full working order? Well, that's where it gets a little bit more interesting. So uh, I took it to a, you know, a fairly empty, quiet space to try and see if I could fly the thing. And it flies and it records and everything's good. And then when I review the footage, you know, as you can see here, it, the, the gimbal, the camera, it's just shaking constantly. And it wasn't windy, it wasn't so the obviously a you know, small lightweight drone flying in, in a windy weather. And you might find that the, the footage isn't so good, but it wasn't windy, it was fairly still. And I wasn't going super high with it or anything like that. And it was just useless, completely useless. Uh, so that I mean, that one wasn't going to do. I mean, I know my production values aren't exactly the best anyway, as I, I'm constantly reminding the comments. But the, this footage absolutely isn't. The main reason I wanted a DJI drone instead of a cheaper one was so they would produce decent video. So uh, anyway, no problem. Contacted them. You know, they provide a warranty, you know, distance settlement regulations, and all that lovely stuff. So back it went, and they refunded me. No problem at all. Happy days. Uh, but what I was surprised to find was that they have immediately relisted it on their website in the same condition with the same description and are perfectly willing and 
and able to sell it to someone else in the same condition. And, and, and I do not consider it to be in working order. If you're buying a drone, you want to make video on it, you expect it to work and you expect it to work to the same standard it would have done when it was new. It might be a little bit beaten up, but it should still work. Uh, but no, they, they've let me list the same description. Uh, I challenged them on this on Twitter and all they said is, we tested it, it works, so we're selling it on. And I, I'm outside maze by that. I mean, I provided them with proof it doesn't work or it doesn't work as it should, uh, and that doesn't seem to bother them. So I'm uh, really amazed by that, and, and it'll certainly make me think twice about buying equipment from them again in the future. Um, you know, what you decide to do that, but that information is up to you. I'm not a big fan of slating companies and, and extolling, you know, bad experiences and stuff, but I, I definitely think it's worth knowing. I think if you're looking for camera equipment and you want to save a bit of money second hand, just be careful because not, it's not always uh, um, what it seems, I don't think. And I think if they described it as faulty and you only wanted it to take pictures rather than video, it would probably be fine, but I, I don't think it's cool. As for Ami, uh, we've just crossed the 500 miles mark right now. Uh, and some of you are going to be surprised for that. You're like, well, you were on like 400 miles not that long ago. It was on 300, uh, just under 300 miles where it broke down. So I think it shows I've not actually been using it very much recently. Uh, obviously, the cold weather plays a part in that. Um, it's a little bit miserable when it's freezing cold uh, for the you know performance issues and stuff that we've talked about in length and also just not particularly had to use it for anything um, not particularly have to go anywhere as I've said before I work from home during the week I'll occasionally use Ami just to nip to the shops or something like that and I, I do try if I need to use a car during the week for shorter journeys Ami will be the car I'll use I, I, I won't use um, my other sort of daily driver which is the diesel because uh, I use that for my big long commute and I've got to go to the office which is over 100 miles away Ami's not going to cut the mustard for that so that's where it comes into play but I try not to use it at all apart from that Ami does all the driving but the, the truth be told I often don't need to go anywhere so it, it sits around a lot but hopefully that's going to change because I've got some plans and obviously a bit more free time which means so I won't be doing these regular commuting videos but I think we'll be going a bit further afield which I know some of you are really keen to see uh, I haven't done any real proper long journeys in Ami yet uh, particularly ones where you actually need to sort of charge on the way or maybe after you get to where you're going to push the envelope a little bit. I know there's some of you that are doing a grand job of that and you're cracking on with it. Uh, so that'll be quite interesting I think, going a bit further afield. So that's definitely the plan and hopefully we can rack up these miles. We'll reach, probably reach a thousand miles a bit quicker than we reach 500 I think. As some of you pointed out, I do need to finish fitting the colour pack. We've still got the stickers to go on. But we'll wait till it's just a little bit warmer. Yeah. We're still seeing it pretty reasonably chilly in the mornings and stuff and I just want to be just a little bit warmer before we mess about trying to put stickers on. I, I heard from a few people on the Facebook groups and stuff that some people have found that a bit of a challenge and, and actually one or two people asking, oh, can we buy replacement stickers because I've made a mess of it? And I mean, that's the most likely outcome when I end up doing it. So I want to give myself a fighting chance by uh, not being freezing cold when I want to do it. But we're not far away. You know, we, we're, the weather's improving. We're getting to the point where I, mean, I think it's 10 degrees right now this morning so we're definitely getting towards the point where I don't need to worry too much about temperature and we can get those stickers on I know some of you are also dying to see that and maybe with this, this spare time I'll finally put some fog X on this and we can see what that does to the um, the window steaming up although obviously as the weather improves it becomes less of an issue but we will definitely do that because I know that some of you are absolutely dying to see that and I keep the I've got the bottles sitting they're sitting in my office next to my desk where, where I work during the week there's there's, there's Fog X and a few other things just sitting there, taunting me every day, and I've never got around to doing it. I think it's more the filming it that's the challenge, because I'll see, um, you know, various unflattering angles will be reaching in here to, to do the windows. It's not going to do much for you. Anyway, I have just arrived at work, so it is time for that a little bit awkward glance shift. I'm not sure. My manager hasn't spoken to me since he confessed my resignation, which is, well, it is what it is. I thought maybe a little bit of acknowledgement would have been, would have would have happened, but it didn't. So, well, what can you say? So I'll see you in a few hours. Well, I might see you a bit shorter than that if things are uh, if things are particularly frosty. I might be back in about ten minutes, but uh, we shall see. And we are done. I actually finished early as well. It's only about three o'clock. wasn't loads of wasn't enough to deliveries on the last run for two vans. So finished. I figured it was the sensible thing for me to finish early, given the other drivers on until a bit later anyway, so happy days. It wasn't too bad today. It was actually quite quiet today, which was nice. Um, 
Spanish was all right as well. And that, and quite interesting. He, he actually sort of expressed a bit of surprise that, that I bothered turning up. Um, I guess there must be a little bit of a thing in, in retail where people just don't bother working their notice. You know, it's a week's notice. And, People, I guess, if you you know a bit disgruntled or whatever, you just don't bother. Oh, what are they going to do about it? But I've never been one for burning bridges. I've always thought it best to you know see things out to the end as you're contractually obliged to do. And uh, you know, unless it's got really really bad and you really can't bear it, I, I, I think that's just the right thing to do. So that's what we did. And everything was all good today. No hard feelings. We shook hands. Everything's good. And uh, I am now uh, unemployed. Well, unemployed from this job but um that's no bad thing i don't think back to hopefully working full time rather full time and a little bit extra and like i say hopefully that means we can up the ante a little bit with the ami videos which is really cool tomorrow i am off to visit uh martin from grand thrift auto if, if you want to uh, watch some classic car themed videos especially stuff from the 70s 80s martin is your man makes very, very good videos and very well produced. I'm off to uh, near Swansea to visit him tomorrow and he is going to lend me his DJI Mini 2 which is hopefully in much better order than the one that I bought from MPB and that means we should be back in business with the drone footage. So an interesting trip tomorrow, obviously it won't be one for Ami, it's a, a good uh, 120 miles or so from home so I don't think that'll be one for, for Ami though. Should be quite interesting. Nip over there, maybe peruse his fleet a little bit. He's got a very, very interesting fleet of of older cars, which you know, not really the, the core interest of the audience of this channel. But I know there are some of you that appreciate uh, older vehicles, so definitely check his channel out if you're interested. There's a link in the description. And there's a running theme of these videos. We talk about UK deliveries, UK army deliveries. Um, I'd love to say I had some really good news so that, that they were finally arriving, but apart from the sort of drips and drabs that we've been seeing right from day one, there's still loads of people waiting for their pop or their vibe or their tonic, you know, the sort of special edition models, if you will, and they just don't seem to be appearing. Uh, and it's very, very frustrating. I know there's a lot of you still waiting. And I, I'm hoping there's been some good news. I think some, I read that some people have been told that they will be getting their army that they've been waiting all this time for on the new 23 reg in March, which obviously isn't very far away. Uh, we are powering through February, so March the 1st is not very far away. So hopefully that means there's some good news coming for those people that are waiting, because if, if they're saying, oh, I'll be on the 23 reg, I'm hoping that means, you know, we're going to start delivering at the start of March and, and not any later. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of people still waiting and it's, it's crap. Uh, the Citroen have handled it really badly. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate. But I do hope that those of you that are waiting get the news you've been waiting for. I know a number of you watch these videos and you're, you're always trying to keep me updated on your deliveries. So do let me know in the comments if you've heard any more than that. Um, I only sort of get little bits and pieces from, from forums and stuff like that. So I might not be 100% up to date with what's going on, but do let me know if you've heard any more. Because I am dying for all you people that have been waiting. I think October was the some of you were, were supposed to receive delivery and it didn't happen. So I know that some of you are getting very, very frustrated. And I do hope that you have some good news very shortly because it's, it's just a bit crap, isn't it? A lot of people moan about how expensive Ami is. And I think it's a prime example of how expensive cars are now. So in front of us is a Kia Picanto, a sort of phase two facelift one. And I bought one of those in 2011. One litre petrol. It was a base model. The one in front of us is a little bit more upmarket than that. It's got the body colour trim and stuff. But it was a base model. Uh, yeah, had absolutely nothing in it. But still, much more of a car than, than Ami is. It was five and a half thousand pounds. It was a run out model. They were they were clearing them out. That, that certainly wasn't the the list price. Uh, there was a big discount on that. Five and a half thousand pounds for a full, you know, proper four seater actual car that can do you know ninety miles an hour plus and. Uh, in, for all intents and purposes, is a car, unlike this. Five and a half grand. That's quite quite remarkable, really. Um, and yet, yeah, I don't know what the list price of a Picanto is today. I'm going to guess about 12, at least. So, you know, things, cars are expensive. 
I saw someone on Twitter the other day, well, it was a few weeks ago now, actually, saying that they, they were uh, reviewing a, a Ford Focus, the, the, um, like one of the press vehicles that Ford had lent to them. And it, it was a, like a mid spec with a little turbo charge put on it. And it had sort of decent equipment and stuff in it. It was £33,000. £33,000 for a one litre three cylinder Ford Focus. And the world really has gone mad. So, I, I mean, I think, you know, yeah, I mean, it's quite expensive for what it is. There's no doubt about that. But, but when you see how much other vehicles cost, uh, you know, right, the bigger cars, their actual car, you know, actually, you can consider it a car and it'll do everything you want of it. But it's 33000 quid for a Ford Focus. And like I say, significantly more than five and a half thousand pounds for a Kia Pekan. Uh, it, it is a completely different world now. I think a lot of people are, are still stuck in the time, you know, maybe 10 years ago when, when cars were significantly cheaper than they are today. I mean, I knew Dacia Sandero was 5995 for ages, and they are, they're 12, 12 and a half grand now. And the Duster, I bought a Duster in 2017, and it, it was the base model, as basic as it comes, black bumpers, no radio, all that stuff. And uh, that was nine and a half thousand pounds, nine, four, nine, five, that was. Um, see, that was the list price, there's no discount available, no, because I'm led to believe there was very little dealer margin in them, so it, it, you know, they very much were relying on income from like finance and extras and stuff. The car itself, there was no margin in really, so the, um, the, the list price was the price you paid. I, mean, I guess a bit like Ami at the moment at least, well, demand's still high. So, yeah, I, I'm in a new duster now, I think they're about 14, 15, and I need to check, I, I will check if they're on the screen, but it's a really, I mean, yeah, we talk about inflation and stuff, but I think new car prices, it really is very, very obvious that cars are significantly more expensive than they were even a short time ago. So, you know, oh yeah, 2017 was six years ago. It doesn't feel like it, but it was. But, you know, to see these massive increases in price, uh, I mean, maybe it's convenient. Maybe, uh, you know, it, it helps support the idea that 8,000 quid for a, a Porterloo on wheels with a tiny little battery that can only do 28 mile an hour. It's reasonable value for money, and I, I, I don't know. I don't know if you can call these value for money. I think anybody buying one knows what they're buying, and that's it. I don't think you're buying one of these because they're good value for money. I don't think that's part of the proposition. If you want value for money, you probably would buy uh, a Dacia Sandero even for twelve and a half grand, because um, that's all the car you'll take that you need for. You know, if you're if you're okay with it, having a pedal engine and stuff, then it, it is. It's all the car you need. But certainly, Hami has its place in the market, and, and I. I think once you get over the, oh, that's really expensive for what it is, then, you know, I think relative to a lot of other stuff on the market, just, I will just cut to that. There's been an MG ZS EV just passed, uh, for Mark 1, like the one that I had, and they've trapped the little stupid cover thing from the charging port in the, the grill, so they've shut the grill and not put the rubber bung back in. And, um, you know, the amount of times I've driven off with the grill open and stuff, uh, it was a really silly design. I don't understand why more manufacturers don't just have like flaps on the charging ports. These rubber bungs are just stupid. But so that was the ninth and final episode of Ami Commutes. It's actually quite interesting seeing the difference that sort of double digit temperatures are making. So uh, we're down to like 12 miles on the old gasometer, and that is definitely in the cold weather. That's definitely the point at which you you will almost certainly see those sort of reduced performance issues and stuff. But that's nowhere near the battery actually being low enough normally to, to cause that. So it's quite interesting that driving home, no issues whatsoever. I'd, normally when it's cold, I've been charging and keeping it charged, keeping a higher state of charge to avoid that. So um, that is good. It means that in the, in the nicer weather, we're, we're, we're not going to need to worry too much about that, that reduced performance. And hopefully that means you can use all of the, the usable range and we can run the battery down, which does bode very well for those longer distance journeys that are going to be coming up. But that brings this series to an end. Uh, let me know in the comments what you want to see from Ami going forward. The, the audience is what drives the channel for sure. There's no doubt about that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.